Hi, in this very uh, short show and tell video, I will show you how I achieve my sketch rendering look using Substance Designer. I generally use uh, Photoshop to achieve those results, meaning I do a couple of render paths in um, ZBrush or V-Ray or whatever rendering software I'm using at the moment. Uh, take them in Photoshop and uh, do some filter and some manipulation to achieve that look. Now, um, playing with Substance lately, I realized why not uh, not try to replicate what I'm doing actually in Photoshop? And um, after some trial and error, I think I have a pretty good workflow that gives me a very uh, consistent and nice result. And the fact that everything is not based, it's allowed me to just uh, change my input at the beginning of the chain and uh, to spit out my output at the end. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm uh, using again a model from my good friend Olivier Couston, another really, really great sculpt model that he sent me last week. Um, I don't know if uh, at that resolution you can see all the detail, but the skull is just marvelous. Um, we will be doing uh, the pass in the walk in the graph. I will show you my graph now, and then I will explain to you what's going on. Uh, please, by all means, don't be freaked out. The graph is very simple. There's not many nodes going on. It's very linear. Um, Yes, it might be a little bit uh, worrisome at first to see a graph noodling like that, but it's just because I'm not very well organized. If I would have been a little bit more organized, the graph would be looking better and more linear. But anyway, um, it's not about using Substance, it's more about the workflow and the idea behind. Let's start. What do I use to do those rendering? First, for this one, uh, I did export everything out of ZBrush. Uh, I did a mask pass, normal pass, um, beauty pass, shadow pass, AO, and the framer pass, and that's pretty much it. Now, let's have a look at what's going on in there. First, let's start with here. Um, I have a text that I plan to put at the end of my image when everything is done at the end of my graph. I just come here and start to add uh, a grunge map, some Red map, some deformation here. Actually, what is this one? This is transformation 2D. Oh yeah, because I did change the, the orientation. And I blend that together on top to give me like a, a stamp effect. You see how my, my text now is no more very clean. And that would be for that area. The next area that is worth mentioning, I think, is the pepper. Um, for the purpose of this exercise, I wanted to not use Photoshop at all. Meaning, I went to Google and I had found uh, to image, but they were not exactly what I wanted. And I was like, well, whatever, I'm in Substance Designer, I can just blend stuff together. Um, see, I have those two image, and I blend them together. So far, so good, nothing crazy. I did tell you, everything is super simple. Um, the next one that is worth talking about is actually what do I do with the normal map? Out of the normal map, I extract a curvature map. That curvature map will be used to drive certain effect down the road, which will come back later. So we have the paper and uh, we have the beauty pass here, right? Then I just blend them together using the mask that is somewhere here. Yeah, you see my mask? And that's what I use to blend together. Now, next step, that will be interesting because I'm pretty sure you will not be able to see all the little details of what's going on, but let's try. Um, next step, I do a warp. <laughs> See, using a texture here as an input, a fractal noise. Then I do some manipulation here for the intensity, and I blend that together on top of, um, of my original image, meaning I blend that on top of that, right? Give me that result. My opacity is at 0.4, I could put it at 100%, but no, 0.4, and I go with the light and mode. Then next, I'm blending that image with another one that I didn't make here, actually. Same story, I'm going with um, a warp, do some level, and I blend them again on top of each other. So, then when I'm here, I do another level, and I will blend that together with what's coming up there. What's coming up there is fairly simple. Again, I have my curvature map 
that go into a filter in this case an edge damage to start with then I do some level and I do a warp I branch out to have two layers meaning I do a warp here and as you can see this one and this one meet again here on top of each other and I do another level where I bring uh, what do I bring here let's see this one here meaning I'm branching out from here fiber uh, glass edge where I cannot pronounce that it's fucking stupid fiber glass edge wear which is another filter that I use to blend on top of my flow a little bit later but let's have a look here first again we have that level and then I blend and I get the nice little sketchiness here in those areas so here where do I go from there well I do the same again with my framer, what I like to call a framer render, basically it's a zebra shader that allows me to, to get very nice uh, black and white detail. Okay, same story as before. I branch out in two different warp, warp one, warp two. Then I branch those two different warp in two different color, assign two different colors to those warp, and I blend them again together before I blend those one again with my dirt. If you remember, I have a dirt graph node here somewhere. You have a node which is edge damage, and uh, I am blending. Let's see, curvature map go down into my dirt here, and I blend that together to get that effect, which is a little bit too cross and too much. But then I blend that on top of my original rendering, and I get this. If you see the difference between both of them, this one to this one. So now what do I do next? Now I go here and those very, 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 very thin lines that you almost don't see, but I know they are there and I like them, are coming from that one here, which is fiberglass edge wear. And uh, where am I here? Okay, I'm coming here. So now if I would be thinking about not about using Photoshop uh, this exercise will be ended by now but remember I told you I plan to not use Photoshop at all let's see what we can do next one is blending just a little bit very very uh, adding the shadow you will see it here here in that area boom shadow or on the ground no shadow shadow okay then I add a little bit of uh, lens dirt, texture I found online. Uh, then I did uh, find a texture online of um, lens effect, uh, what that called, a vignette effect, right? Something more. And then I add my text again from the beginning and I'm done. So now I could have done all of that in Photoshop. Uh, the only problem with that, it's uh, it's not really a problem, it's just a different type of workflow. And I thought the fact that um, I kind of like the look I'm getting out of Substance Designer, and sometimes I like the look I'm getting out of Photoshop. I just like to have more tool in my arsenal. Um, now the cool stuff with Substance Designer is I can just come here, look at my input, and replace them with the input that I have here. So let's go here, B A O. Actually, this one is B already. Let's go with A. A O, A shadow, A render, A normal, and A mask. Uh, which one is my mask here? That's my mask. Oh, A mask. And do not forget the A framer. So. And as you can see, I did cook a new render very, very, very quickly. So now, assuming that I respect the convention I just had, meaning uh, being occlusion, shadow, framer, uh, I should be able to just grab something else. Import bitmap. Let's go uh, here, Dropbox. Let's go somewhere. I lost it. Offer. No, let's go to my desktop. This will be easier. Temp. Let's grab all of those one. And 
and same story right I could just come here replace BPA mask BPA framer uh, BPA shadow and maybe BPA AO BPA normal and uh, let's replace the render here so now if I go here wait a little bit if I forgot nothing nope, everything seems to be good see here this one is good this one is good this one is not good to back I did have a small crash due to my firewall um, here yeah. we go to the end and we realize that I have a new render now do I like the look of this one maybe not maybe I want to change some stuff here let's see I'm not even looking at what I'm doing I'm just going with the flow here let's change some color here let's change some green uh, let's change to yellow and let's have a look at the back so as you can see I get different look very quickly um, I could also change the look of everything here. More well, well than which will turn out into a very specific look, which is way too much and very ugly. But you get the idea. I mean, when that stuff is set up properly, I can just go and change whatever I want. So, uh, I think it's pretty much for today. I hope that uh, you did enjoy this little show and tell, which was very quick. Uh, as always, if you have questions, send me an email and I will try to respond to it uh, to the best of my ability. Wenn Sie Fragen hätten, irgendwie über diese, diese Vorschau, Sie können einfach mir eine E-Mail schicken. Ich würde versuchen, darauf zu antworten, so schnell wie möglich und der Best von uh, meiner Ability. Was auch immer. Oder Sie können mir über Skype erreichen oder Facebook oder was auch immer. So. In French, si vous avez des problèmes et des questions concernant cette petite démonstration rapide, n'hésitez pas à me contacter et je me ferai un plaisir de vous répondre aussi rapidement que possible. Merci. Well, I think I'm done for today.